Hello internet. So last time we built this thing. Uh, so this is sort of our side-scrolling shooter player, our ship, and it can move up and down and is clamped to a specific height so it can't go off the screen. I want to kind of jazz this up a little bit. Uh, so instead of just having it go up and down, that's kind of boring. I want to add a tilt. Uh, so the front of the ship kind of go, if it's going up, the front of the ship goes up and kind of faces that way. And if it's going down, the front of the ship goes down and kind of faces the direction it's going. I think it should be relatively straightforward and I think we can use a lot of the stuff we've already built. So I guess, I guess we'll get started. <laughs> I need to actually save that speed because it was way too slow previously. And we are actually not going to be modifying any of the scripts. I don't think we need to touch any of them to get this effect working. So instead, let's do a ship motion rotation. And so I don't want to tie this to the actual uh, transformation or movement of the actual ship. I want to tie it to the velocity and kind of have a lerp built in. So it lerps towards uh, some high value, let's we'll say like 30 degrees if you're going up and lerps down if you're going down. And I only want it to modify the, uh, I only want it to modify the, uh, <laughs> the art. I don't want it to modify the actual ship because what could happen is like, I don't, I don't want it to uh, change where you're shooting so much. I want it to be a visual effect. Uh, I've seen this done in other games where the ship doesn't actually, uh, to kind of go into game, where it doesn't actually uh, rotate up and down. Like I'm thinking uh, along the Z axis. So it'd go like this, up and down. I've seen it in a different way where it's actually on the side. So it kind of does something like this, like dips a wing. <laughs> when it's going down and then raises the wing when it's going back up. Uh, we could do that too. What I'm concerned about is if I'm modifying the ship's transformation, if I were to change the Z, suddenly we're shooting down diagonally and that doesn't make any sense and that plays terribly. So I don't, I don't want that to happen, which I think means we should just add a cube underneath here and delete the one attached to the ship like so. So it looks the same because I just added this as a child, but we can fix the rotation of the ship and actually just modify it here instead. Same effect looks the same, but plays slightly differently. So we're going to start with that and then we're going to take a motion rotation, this guy and just attach it there and then we just need to implement it so uh, public float okay so there's there's a bunch of things we're going to need first we're going to need an axis rotation axis this is going to be the object world space doesn't really matter uh, we're kind of fixed so it, it shouldn't matter <laughs> but the, it's going to be the rotation axis that you're going to rotate on. So if I want to switch it so that you're dipping wings instead of rotating the actual player up and down, you can just change the rotation axis without having to actually change any code. And then a public float uh, max rotation angle and a float min rotation angle. So these are going to be the min and the max of what you're doing. So if you're going down, you're going to uh, lerp towards the min. If you're going up, you're going to lerp towards the max. We're going to use a lerp so it's kind of smooth. So if you stop, you don't just suddenly aim straight again. It kind of pulls you back slowly. Uh, so there's some interpolation. Public float lerp speed. This is just going to be a, a, a scalar that's going to increment how fast we actually lerp. So uh, it's going to be based on the time, but also if you increase the speed above one, it's going to go faster. If you lower it below one, it's going to go slower. And that should be it. No, uh, we also, we, we created that child. So we're going to need a reference to the transform, which is going to be our, um, 
affected transform. I don't like that name so much, but we're going to go with it. Private ship input input. And so again, we we've, we've done this in all the previous scripts. We're just going to require the input equals git component ship input and we will require component type of ship input. Again, just requires the component so that we kind of avoid some uh, screw ups just because we don't find the reference. It avoids us having those compile time errors. So hopefully that all makes sense. Hopefully it all works. And then now that we have the ship input, I need to take the um, actually we can calculate a target angle, which is going to be equal to our let's see input. How are we going to do this? Uh, so if the input is positive, input greater than, oh, that's not going to work. Set that equal to zero. 0, 0.0 f. Uh, since I'm using var, I have to do 0, 0.0 f. Otherwise, it's going to create an int. And then everything else below that is actually going to think it's supposed to be an int. And we're going to get errors. So let's do if uh, our input dot vertical is greater than zero. If it's greater than zero, then our target angle becomes the input dot vertical times the max rotation angle. I was trying to think of a cool function that would actually do all of this by itself. Uh, we could probably do it. It actually thinking about it, it we could. It shouldn't be too difficult, but I'm not, I, I didn't get that far. So for now, we're just going to do it the old fashioned if way. If the input is less than zero, then the target angle equals the input dot vertical, oops, times the min rotation. And so if it's zero, it's just going to stay that way. We could have actually just used an else and been inclusive on either one of these. Because the vertical would have been zero, it would have just gone back to zero anyway, and we would have been fine. But this way, it kind of handles it automatically. This whole thing just calculates a target angle for us to actually try to hit. And so we need to get a target rotation, which we can do with the quaternion.euler. Ooh. Haha. <laughs> Didn't think this far ahead. Let's see. Axis angle. I think that's what we want. Angle axis. Yeah. So we have the angle. So target angle. And we have our axis. So axis. Rotation axis. Our target rotation is going to be equal to that. And then we just need to lerp towards that target rotation for our affected transform. So I want to take the affected transform dot rotation and set it equal to a quaternion dot lerp. Uh, is there a slurp? Yeah. So lerp and slurp are slightly different. Lerp is a linear interpolation. Slurp is a spherical interpolation. I believe slurp is better for quaternions, but my math is knowledge on that is a little bit old. We're going to use a slurp unless it doesn't work. So <laughs> there you go. Slurp from the target. Ooh, that's not right. From the affected transform dot rotation to the target rotation. And then the, fan the, the fancy way that I kind of do this is have a uh, speed. So time dot delta time times the speed, the lerp speed. And this is just going to take some fraction that's going to be some positive thing. So it's going to, uh, assuming on the small side, it's going to take a more, more of the effective transform and kind of slowly move towards the target rotation. This gets you kind of a smooth transformation and it looks all right. So at least in the past, it's worked all right. So we'll see if that's still right.
Uh, by default, I'm going to actually give this a vector three dot forward. So it'll be on the Z axis by default. And that way we just get something that works out of the box and we don't have to change that or remember, remember something. This is going to expect a unit vector and we can actually just validate it. So rotation axis equals the rotation axis dot normalized. I could just call normalize on it. Uh, sure. I don't know the benefits of this other than there's no additional memory allocation, but we'd be replacing it anyway. So it probably, it shouldn't matter too much one way or the other, but this will just do an in place normalize of it. So rotation axis will be forced to be a normal vector. And so I think we're good. And if not, then oops. <laughs> so rotation motion or oops, I already had this one attached. So let's not do that. Let's attach our cube. Max rotation 30 minus 30. That might be too much, but we should be able to see something happen. And so if I start this now, it goes in the same direction both times. But you sort of get the idea, right? It's rotate. Oh, hold on. Did I screw something up? No. Min rotation. Oh, because the vertical becomes negative. So I don't actually, what, what's ending up happening here, uh, input that vertical becomes negative and the min rotation is also negative. So we also get, we get a positive here which is why it's going back in the positive direction. So if I drop this to 30 again, it goes down now. And so this is sort of one of the effects uh, we could get. One of the other ones would be on the X axis. And so that's going to like dip the wing if you go down and raise it if you go up, which would theoretically keep the projectiles in, in line with the art which might make more sense, but we can do either with this implementation. So it kind of just works and it's fairly smooth because of our LERP. Uh, so everything is going as planned. <laughs> I think, I think this is really it. Uh, this is sort of where I wanted to get based on learning the thing. We, we could probably pull out the rotation angle. Actually, Everything becomes way easier if we do that. So let's just do that uh, rotation angle. And so we lose the min and max, but we get this benefit. I can delete everything except for that because now uh, this is handling positive or negative. And so if rotation angle is 30, we will get the same results here because this will go to like negative one, which just gives us a, a rotation of negative 30. So as long as we don't want it to be two separate uh, speeds, like if you're going down, I, if we want it to rotate like at a slower rate or faster rate, uh, that this can't handle that. But it can simplify a few other things. <laughs> so if I go here and set this to 30, it's going to go the up, up, down thing. But now it works in both angles and we don't need to do anything else. So we just cut out like seven lines of code or something as well as two ifs and all that other fun stuff. And we get the same result. I think this is better. <laughs> so I'll leave this here. I think this is, this is a good place to stop. If you guys have suggestions on things we can add to this or other things that kind of fit this genre of project, let me know. We can definitely, definitely take a look, but yeah, I think that's it for this for now. Uh, we still need to do shooting and enemies. But after that, we've kind of got a, got a really, 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 really basic side scroller. Sans the side scrolling. We haven't done that yet either, but that, that should be hopefully easy. So yeah, that's it for now. So until next time, see you internet.